Hey YouTube! So just in case you're new here, my name is YK. I was formerly a software developer at Google, but now I work on this YouTube channel full time. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to learn to code, the best resources available online, how to choose a personal project to work on, and my thoughts on getting a computer science degree or going to a coding bootcamp. I actually briefly talked about this topic in one of my previous videos, but I'm gonna go into much more detail in this one. So the first step for learning to code is to learn some programming fundamentals. For this step, I'd recommend one of those interactive websites like Code Academy or Free Code Camp. So the way these websites works is actually really cool. So the way it works is you go to one of those websites and you can basically just start typing your code right away and check if your code is correct. It's actually pretty unusual because if you want to do some coding, usually you first need to set up some kind of special environment on your computer. And if you're a beginner, it's actually really easy to get stuck just trying to set up the right environment, you know, installing the right things and setting up the right things. So I would say these websites are super helpful for getting started with coding right away. But if you prefer learning from videos instead of, you know, reading too much, I'd recommend websites like Pluralsight and lynda.com, both of which have good video courses. So just pick one of those websites and on that website, search for something like Programming Fundamentals or Python for Beginners. And whatever you choose, try to use their free resources and free trials as much as possible because that way you'll be able to learn you know, most of the programming fundamentals for free and you'll be able to see which website you like the most. So at this stage, really focus on learning common programming basics. So these are things like variables, functions, arrays or lists, depending on the language that you're using, for loops, if statements, and even classes and objects. And once you know these basics, the second step after that will be to start building your first personal project. So when it comes to building a personal project, the most common question I get is, how should I choose which project to work on? There are basically three criteria I would personally use for choosing which project to work on. First of all, you should choose something that you're interested in building or that you're interested in doing already. So for example, if you like playing video games, you might want to create a simple video game. And if you like photography, maybe you can build a portfolio website where you can show off all your best photos. And if you like trading stocks or even bitcoins, maybe you can build a system that analyzes stock charts for you. And whatever you choose, it's really important to choose something that you can keep motivated about. And the second point to consider is you should start with something that's really simple. So if you want to build, say, a video game, don't start with something really complex like League of Legends, but start with something simpler like Flappy Bird or even Tic-Tac-Toe. And if you want to build a website, don't start with something complete like Facebook, but just start with a to-do list website and then go from there. And the third point to consider is ideally, you should build something that's useful for yourself or for someone else. And that way, it's gonna give you extra motivation, you know, so that it works for yourself or for someone else. And if you can say something like, I built this thing and it was used by 10,000 people, it's gonna look really good on your resume. But that's kind of hard. So I would say first focus on the first two criteria. So at least find something that you're interested in building and that's pretty simple to build. And just in case you don't have any ideas, here are a few ideas for you to get started with. A to-do list app or a website or something like Twitter, but something that's much simpler than Twitter. So just the ability to tweet and follow someone else. And if you like video games, start with something simple like Tetris, Sudoku, or just tic-tac-toe. Okay, once you start learning programming fundamentals, and once you start building your first personal project, actually it's very likely that you get stuck at some point. And it's very natural because you're a beginner and programming is actually really hard. But when you're stuck, it's actually really important to know how to get help from other people. And the first thing you should try is actually you should just use Google. So let's say just as an example, you've been building this program and don't worry too much about what it's doing. And let's say it's going just fine, but suddenly you get an error message. So this is pretty similar to what a typical error message looks like. It says recursion error here, and then you have a bunch of 
nonsense here, really. And then here it says recursion error, maximum recursion, blah, blah, blah. And let's say you don't know what this error message means. What you should do then is you should just copy this error message and then type that into Google. And hopefully you'll be able to find someone else who had the same problem and then you'll be able to find an answer to how to solve that issue too. And one trick I sometimes do in Google is I put this error message in quotation marks. And just like that, I can tell Google to find web pages that have these exact same words in the exact same order. Because without these quotation marks, sometimes Google finds web pages that are not directly related to what I'm looking for. And once you start doing this, this website called Stack Overflow will come up over and over again in your Google results. And it's like a Q&A website for software developers, and it's one of the best resources for any programming related questions. So when you have any programming related questions, you should just first try using Google and Stack Overflow. Then if you can't find anything that's relevant on there, you can also ask something yourself on Stack Overflow. Just keep in mind that it might take a while to get an answer, say two to three weeks or longer. Other than that, for asking questions, I'd recommend websites like Reddit for the Learn Programming subreddit or language specific subreddits, for example, the Python ones, if you're interested in learning Python. I'd also recommend Facebook groups, for example, the Free Code Camp Earth Facebook group, which is basically a group of people who are trying to learn to code together. And again, language specific groups, for example, groups for Java. And in addition to all of that, getting involved with offline communities is also a good idea to get help and advice in person. For example, you can use meetup.com. On meetup.com, you can just search for the kinds of events you're interested in. Let's say Java or iOS development near you. Let's say Vancouver. And if you click groups, you'll be able to find relevant groups right there. You should try using Facebook events as well. And to get started with that, just search for programming or coding. And then in this search view, just go to the events section and select your location. Let's say Vancouver, British Columbia, and you'll be able to find relevant events right there. So let's say you worked on a few personal projects. You already learned some programming fundamentals and you started getting involved with ideally offline and online communities, what you should do after that is you should try to get a job or an internship as soon as possible and ideally a paid one too. So when you're learning everything on your own, you might make a lot of mistakes, but you might not even realize that. So if you get a job and if you start working with other software engineers, they'll be able to give you some feedback on your code. So you'll be able to learn much faster and hopefully you'll be able to get paid at the same time. And obviously there are different ways of applying for jobs like using LinkedIn or going to career fairs. But the one I'd recommend, the one method I'd recommend for beginners is networking. And I actually don't like the word networking much, but I see it as just, you know, meeting people and basically making friends. So there are a couple of reasons why I recommend networking for beginners. One is that if you followed my steps, in the step before this, you should have already found some events that you like going to on Facebook and meetup.com. So you should just keep using them. And then the second reason is that if you're a beginner, you probably don't have a lot of experience. So you don't have a strong resume. So if you just apply online, it's gonna be really hard for you to stand out from all the other candidates. But if you have some kind of personal connections, people will be more likely to trust you even though you don't have a lot of experience. So it should be an easier way for you to get a job. And actually when I didn't have a lot of experience, you know, when I just got started with coding, that's how I got my first and second internships too. So when you go to one of these events for the first time, it might be pretty awkward. You know, you might not know what to say exactly, but it's actually pretty simple. You just need to basically walk up to someone and say something like, what's your name? And what brings you to this event? And what are you hoping to get out of it? If the other person asks you the same question, you can just say something like, you know, I'm mostly here to learn because I just got started with coding. And I'm also curious about what kind of jobs are available, you know, with what I'm learning. And then, you know, just have a good conversation basically. And once you have a meaningful connection that way, 
you know, either right there or after the event, you can start asking for help for, you know, learning specific technologies or for getting a job. And one piece of advice for you here would be to not just ask for help, but also offer help. For example, by volunteering your time to, you know, local organizations. And that way you'll be able to build trust more quickly and build, you know, meaningful connections more quickly. And like I said, once you get a job that way, you'll be able to learn coding much, much more quickly because you'll be able to learn from your colleagues. And based on your experience from your first job, it's gonna be much easier for you to get a second job and a third job and so on. So, so far, I mostly talked about how to learn to code on your own. So you might say, what about going to a university or going to a coding bootcamp? If you don't have a degree yet, and if you're planning to get one soon, I definitely recommend computer science. And that's partly because computer science will give you sort of fundamental knowledge that you need for writing efficient code, but also because of some other subtle things. For example, when I went to my university, I wasn't studying computer science. I was studying statistics. And then when I wanted to apply for some jobs and you know, programming related internships, I couldn't really use the university system because those job postings on my university system, they were for computer science students only. So there are some subtle advantages like that computer science students enjoy. But if you already have a degree, let's say in biology or art history or whatever, I personally wouldn't take a second degree in computer science just to learn coding, unless it's like a shorter program, let's say for two years, because I think additional four years is just way too long. And what about coding bootcamps? Well, first of all, in case you don't know what a coding bootcamp is, it's sort of like a private school you can go to for three to four months to learn to code basically. And I think they're really good for the support systems they have. So if you get stuck, you can just ask questions and the pressure that's built in for you to learn at a set schedule. So the downside of a coding bootcamp is that it's kind of expensive. So personally, if I were you, I would first learn to code on my own. And then if it doesn't work out for any reason, then I'd consider a coding bootcamp. Another thing they might say on their website is that when you go through their program, after the program, they'll be able to you know, connect you with potential employers. So it's gonna be easier for you to get a job. But I think that connection aspect is sort of overrated because if you just wanna build connections, you, know, you can just build connections by going to events and stuff. So if I were to go there, I would just go there to learn coding basically. Okay, if you're curious about what programming language you should learn first, I have a video about that. And if you just wanna get started with coding, I'd recommend my Python tutorials for absolute beginners right there. And if you're not part of the CS Dojo community yet, you should join us by subscribing to this channel. I'm YK from CS Dojo, of course, and I'll see you guys in the next video.